Hi everybody, welcome to week three. This week we're broadcasting, I'll say, from Mason Muir Fine Art, a gallery in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and it's a gallery that specializes in self-taught art, outsider art, art from Latin America and by African Americans and people of the African diaspora uh, and other folks as well, other photographers, other painters. Um, but here I am standing next to the work of Lena Binkele, and she's an artist from Bogota, Bogota, Colombia, who works in bronze. And she's created this beautiful horse with a boy riding on top uh, that uh, to me speaks to uh, our topic of inspiration that comes from the unconscious. In our readings, we've talked about the work of Frida Kahlo, talked about her a little bit earlier in the course, about how she used her artist journal and free association to provide inspiration for her paintings. So using uh, words that came to mind, either words that were linked together by meaning or by the sounds as they're pronounced in Spanish, and then were incorporated into her paintings. We've also read Mary Watkins' work, and Mary talks about imagination, uh, of course, coming from the unconscious, how the ability to imagine is something that we are very able to access as children, but that becomes more difficult as we are adults. And she talks about a half-dream state, a state that's different from daydreaming, and that in daydreaming, the ego is attached to the daydream. However, in a half-dream state for creative purposes and imagination, we're able to step back and, and, and uh, have a view of what's happening with uh, the, the content of what's being imagined. Uh, these ideas, of course, are based in Jung's work and in active imagination. And the idea that Jung had in a time of crisis after his break with Freud uh, many people would say when he himself was uh, dealing with a psychotic break that the use of imagination in a playful and creative way as in childhood was a way that he was able to then heal himself and by paying attention to what happened in that process to develop uh, his theory, to begin to develop his theory um, that is related to the depth psychology or that informs the depth psychology that we are interested in now. And so you've been looking at uh, the article about the Red Book, uh, looking at his work that was created during that time, um, what he imagined, his use of the mandala as a way to center and as a way to heal. Uh, and uh, gleaning from that, I'm sure, what we can use to inform our artistic practice. Uh, interestingly, when one's working from the unconscious, uh, it seems that there's maybe stigma. So, for example, with the Red Book, there was controversy about how much of Jung's personal process and what was going on with him in this time of crisis should be made public because perhaps it suggested that there was, that there was mythology. Um, and so I think that's something important to consider and reflect on a little bit further. We're also looking at the work of Martin Ramirez, who is someone who has uh, mental illness, and so from Jung's perspective, we might say that he may be working directly from the unconscious, um, provides inspiration to me for very powerful and interesting work. But again, there, there is this question of what it means to work directly from the unconscious and what, it, what the culture says about someone who does work in that way. So we'll stop this little bit of the video. Mason Muir Fine Art is a huge gallery, and so we're going to move to another spot and look at more work that speaks to our topic for this week.